All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Boca Podcast. I'm your host, Nathan Holritz. It is good to have you here today. For those of you that are in the U.S., you may know this is a holiday. It's Memorial Day, and um, we are, well, normally we would be taking the day off. Um, I made an exception today, and I was just telling our, our brand new guest, I'm actually excited for this conversation, so I don't mind to make the exception. And I hope that those of you that might have a little bit of extra time today will chime in. You'll you'll ask questions, comment, join the conversation here as we live stream both at facebook.com slash Boca Podcast and youtube.com slash Boca Podcast. Don't be shy. Come join the conversation and uh, make this a group discussion. That's part of the benefit of these live streams. For those of you that are actually listening to the audio version of this after the fact. Yes, we do live stream every single one of our episodes now and would love to have you come join the conversation. Please feel free to do so. Uh, If you follow us at Boca Podcast, B-O-K-E-H Podcast on Instagram, you can keep up to date with the upcoming live streams and uh, come again, be part of the conversation. We'd love to have you here. And then the last thing before I introduce my guest for today, just a reminder, as I promised you all that I would do every single episode, I made a donation to Charity Water before we got started. I popped the receipt up there on the screen just for accountability. And uh, I just want to take the opportunity once again to encourage everybody listening in to look for opportunities to give back. It's amazing how just a little bit of money can go a long ways and make a difference in others' lives. Look for those opportunities today, whether it's your local community or some of the larger organizations like Charity Water. All right. Well, enough of the introduction. It's time to introduce a brand new guest on the show today. And I'm lucky to be joined by Ida Glowick. And Ida, am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Is that is that right? It's actually Glowick. And it's because it's a German name. We turned that W to a V. (laughs) Okay, got it. Got it. Well, thank you for the clarification. And I I guess I should have asked that before we got started. (laughs) No worries. I have to tell you like a totally random fact. Um, Ida, and am I pronouncing your first name correctly? That's correct. Okay. So Ida, this is very interesting. I actually thought about this morning as I was not too long before the podcast started. I grew up in Japan um, and in one of the towns that I lived in in Japan was actually called Ida. Phonetically, it's spelled A-I-R-A, Ida. Ah. So with the the R is rolled, but it sounds very similar to your name. I'm like, oh, that's that's kind of an interesting kind of random connection. But uh, that's your random Whoa. fact of the day. <laughs> but that's good to know because I never knew that. That's that's awesome. Now, does Ida have a particular meaning? Like, what's the, what's the background to that name? <sighs> you know, um, I'm Ethiopian, so my parents just I don't know why they even named me Ida. But there's that connection to like there's this Princess Ida. There's the opera and everything. Interesting. People have told me different um, meanings in the past, but it's never been consistent enough to for me to believe it (laughs) (laughs) you're like yeah whatever okay i'll just give it my own meaning (laughs) that's right fair enough okay well i want to i want to jump right into the conversation today because we got a big topic to tackle we're going to be talking about how to minimize overwhelm in our lives as (laughs) photography business owners i shot weddings for over 10 years i know what it's like to be overwhelmed i'm an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. actively still to this day multiple brands i know what it's like to be overwhelmed but there are ways for, on a very practical level for any business owner, certainly photography business owners, to minimize overwhelm. And we're going to be getting into some practical suggestions that you have for us. Before we do that, though, I, I want to get give our, our listeners an opportunity to get to know you. And I'd love for you to just to start with something that you were talking to me about before we started recording, before we went live. Um, Mm -hmm. about your mission because you have the the seeming deep sense of uh, a mission which is to help photographers kind of get their lives back it's something that we share and I'd love for you to speak to that yeah you know when I got into this business my husband already had the photography business I just joined him I joined as a videographer it was very something new for me and i knew nothing about being self-employed i just was thrust into it and had no idea how to deal with clients how to deal with my work we just took on bookings we were booked like every weekend the whole summer so by the time that yeah the wedding season came to the end we're like zombies. Our eyes were looking out. Um, <laughs> we, I feel like we were not serving our clients to the best of our abilities by the sure. end of the summer. Sure. And I just realized, hey, uh, and the winter ro- rolls around, you know, in Germany. And that means we're at home more. And I realized, hey, we live just by the lake and we barely even went to the lake. We didn't meet our friends like this cannot be what life is, you know, and we had to yep. make some serious changes. That's a great way yeah. to put it, actually. And, you know, it's funny you mentioned the lake because 
literally an hour ago, I was sitting at the lake. There's a lake about 15 yeah. minutes from my from my house, from my apartment. And it's weird until this year, really, I haven't taken advantage of it as much as I should have. It's so yeah. easy to get caught up in the day to day busyness. And in many ways, mm -hmm. I have a lot of flexibility as a business owner, but I don't always take advantage of that because I'm not always as intentional as I should be. And I yeah. get the sense that that's where we're going to go in the conversation. You're going to be sharing some some tips and tricks <laughs> later on about how to intentionally go about kind of getting our lives back as entrepreneurs. Is that right? Nathan, you're amazing because like the word that I've chose for this conversation is being intentional. Yeah. And the reason that photographers end up in the situation, those who are feeling super overwhelmed mm. are they are actually unintentional in the way that they're going about things. That's a, yeah. Wow. Loaded topic. <laughs> We're going to go go there in just a second, but I do want to give our listeners an opportunity to get to know you a little bit. So let's kind of start out with some introductory questions. Um, sure. And the one that I that I usually start with has to do with brand position. I know that you're involved in a photography yeah. business, but you also have a yeah. podcast. And I, I want to focus on the podcast in relation to this conversation mm -hmm. about brand position. What is there are a lot of photography podcasts out there. What is your photography podcast is brand position, your, your UVP, mm -hmm. unique value proposition, if you will. Yeah, literally, that was what my podcast is about. I am helping overwhelmed wedding photographers to get their lives back. And I'm doing this by providing them with inspiration, tools, and resources. Lovely. And and as we're talking here, I'm going to pull up the, the website. So anybody <laughs> listening in, if you're not watching live, you can go to wedding-photography-podcast.com and major props to you Ida because you have above the fold the the value proposition or the brand position wedding photography podcast build a thriving brand and business it's very clear what it is that you intend to do with the podcast so immediately the person that comes to your website knows oh this is the thing that I'm going to get when I listen to this podcast and that kind of clarity is super important as photography business owners really any brand that we clearly state what that value proposition is. And so again, props to you for, for being so clear with that, but I want, and Thank we're going to come back again to that intention uh, that you described, but I want to keep going in the conversation to the next question. Talk to me a little bit about uh, customer experience. I know that you're engaging with guests on the podcast, but you're also a photography business owner. Is there a principle and idea that you've learned in the process with those two brands about creating a customer experience that's made a big difference for you? Yeah, definitely. So I want to focus a little bit about the wedding photography business and what I've learned over time working in Germany. I'm not German. I'm new to this country, relatively new. Sure. Um, it, it was a process for me to actually understand the market, the German market. You know, um, I studied in the US, so I had kind of like this you know, American market, I understood that more. And then it's different here. And it's really about understanding the values uh, and their concerns. And that's how we kind of plan out our experience. You know, mm -hmm. our clients, they really value transparency and they really value privacy. So that's something that's like on the forefront where even our communications, what they value, we're very quick in the way that we communicate. We're very straightforward in the way that we communicate. And also when it comes to privacy, we really make sure that they know that all of their images are kept private. We never publish anything online mm -hmm. without their permission. And those are the things that I feel like really elevates the kind of experience. Yeah, and I think as you're describing that about the stark contrasts of mm -hmm. that compared to the typical American culture, which is just like yeah. share everything, right? Yeah. Um, so it's so important. I mean, we can look at it on a kind of grand scale like that or or a bigger picture level, but some of the nuance mm -hmm. too in each and every market that we're in, making, again, the intentional effort to go and understand, to learn that marketplace so that we know how to engage with them the most effective mm -hmm. way possible. It, it seems obvious in some ways, but I think I don't know that we always, again, intentionally think that way. And I think it makes a big difference. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, my husband is German. He's born and raised here. So in the beginning, when I entered this business, even a lot of the education that I got was coming from the U.S., right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to implement that information onto our business. And yeah. he was already aware from the beginning and he'd be like, Ida, that is not going to work with the German speaking market, which includes Germany, Switzerland, Austria, the main market that we serve. Okay. And I was quite insistent at first. And then I had to also see, oh, actually, he's right. It doesn't work. So 
it's something that I've been tweaking now. I feel like I really get it. I know what to say. I know how to act. I know what to write on the website that really speaks directly to them the whole journey through. And um, it's just something that we really need to pay attention to. That's cool. That's a good reminder for everybody too. Um, yeah. Having also lived, grown up actually in, in Japan, as I mentioned earlier, I spent about 10 years of my life there. If I were wow. to go to the to <clears throat> Japanese, in, into Japan, in Japanese culture, and act yeah. like an American and Japanese culture, especially the more rural areas, <laughs> I would put so many mm -hmm. people off because the, yeah. the culture is vastly different, right? I've spent quite a bit of time in India as well. And actually there's quite a bit of similarity between Japanese culture and Indian culture. Again, the mm -hmm. same thing. If I were to go into Indian culture and be my be your typical American in Indian culture, yeah. expecting that people engage with me like in, in, in kind of a like minded way, it would be naive of me. So a willingness yeah. to keep an open mind to go in to understand, even if we're just talking about moving to a different state or a city, um, looking yes. at the way that the local market functions, the way that people think and learning to cater to those needs and desires. Super important. It's a great, great reminder. I know that we're going to be talking about how to minimize overwhelm as a major topic here in just a few minutes. Yeah. But if we if, if there are listeners that are on with us right now and they miss that part mm -hmm. and you had like just one big idea that you wanted to share with them about time management, how to manage time more effectively, how to balance um, work with your personal life more effectively, what would that big principle be? For me, it's all about planning ahead. I'm a huge planner, like instead of just blindly finding yourself into something when you can actually have an overview and set things out, plan it, and mm. then you need that discipline and focus to see it through. That's <laughs> right. the key. <laughs> well, I, I laugh because I, I have big ideas. It's the follow through yeah. a lot of times that that is the challenge, right? Because you actually got to go do the work. You got to show up consistently and do yeah. the work. So you're right. You got to follow through. What does planning look like to you, though? Um, on a little bit more practical, mm -hmm. tangible level, because I know that a lot of photographers are, they might be self-proclaimed artist types, right? Not as not necessarily right. the most organized individuals in the world. And that's fine, um, just generally speaking. But if we do want to minimize overwhelm, as we're going to talk about, if we want to manage our time more wisely, we have to be a little bit more structured. What does that look like to plan on a very tangible level, say week to week? You know, it looks different for everyone. And that's what I love making things individual to the person. You need to figure yourself out. Like, and I know that especially because I have my husband working right next to me. And the way that I plan and organize for him is crazy. He thinks I spend more time planning than doing anything else. <laughs> <laughs> in his eyes, like all he needs is a Google calendar. He puts his stuff in, nothing goes wrong. He feels good about it. And he's been working like this forever. But for me, me that just was not enough sure i literally i am a person who needs like a planner to write it down see it write it down again plan it out change it around and then that's how like i realized okay i need one customized for wedding photographers didn't find it created one for myself okay it took me a while and that's what i use right now and it just keeps me on track and that way yeah things are just going good ever since I did that. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, so you're, you like to write things down versus typing things out too? Do you like the paper versus the, the pen? Okay, the versus the digital, Absolutely. I okay. Yeah. yeah, so like I literally had a physical planner which I was using like a pen and paper. Mm. Um, but this time, like I realized, hey, I want to make this available to photographers around the world and shipping planners just did not make sense. So I created a digital planner, which is simpler because I have a stylus and I can write on my iPad. Yeah, it has the same feeling and I actually can erase stuff and rewrite. So it's actually <laughs> right. better. There's a lot of convenience in that. Like I, I get I mean, I have in front of me a notebook and you know, a pen and a notebook here. I'm going to take notes as we're talking. Mm -hmm. Um, I do like, there's something about that tangible process that's nice, but the convenience factor of having everything synced up digitally through the cloud yeah. is, I don't, I don't know how anybody can give that up because it's these days, as much information as business owners as we need to keep track of, the idea mm -hmm. that everything is just in a, like a piece of paper, a notebook that can get lost uh, or misplaced otherwise, like that, that is, that's stressful to me. So I love that I can, that I can access the information any and everywhere. And like you pointed out, now we've got these various tools that give us that writing yeah. experience. So it's kind of best of both worlds. 
that's really lovely. Oh, but just to kind of totally. dig it. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I just wanted to add like with the digital planner, for example, I use my iPad, but I have the same app on my phone. Okay. So if I'm anywhere, I can access exactly everything I wrote on my phone. So that cool. works out. <laughs> yes. Oh, and, it, and it's it's so convenient that way. But I, yeah. I want to just just for a second, talk to me a little bit about what that actually the planning process looks like when you talk about writing it down. So are you starting like at the very beginning of the week, Monday morning? Are you planning the whole week out? Are you doing it day by day? Practically, what does that look like? Um, I want to step back and say that my planning actually starts in the beginning of the year. Okay. You know, or even beyond. It really starts when it comes to the wedding season as wedding photographers. It comes to, okay, how many weddings am I going to take and when am I going to take these weddings? So I literally have like weekends blocked off every two wow. months at least. Yeah, in the wedding season where I know, okay, we're going to take a trip somewhere, just feel refreshed. For example, we already blocked out. We were just in Corsica, France last week. And wow. then in July, we've blocked out time and we're going to Norway. Okay. And it just keeps us so excited and motivated because yep. in the past, like I said, we were working like every single weekend yep. and made us crazy. So that planning already starts when we're taking bookings for the coming year, right? That's and cool. then I already see, um, I personally actually love editing my photos. Like, I How think dare you, who, Ida. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just one of those people, but it's also doable for me because I don't have like a ton of weddings and it's just part of the fun for me. So I edit my own images. So I already plan which days of the week I'm going to edit those images. And I also know, okay, which, um, what time of the day am I actually productive? You know, mm. so I know like mornings, I'm pretty useless in the morning. So I've learned <laughs> <laughs> that like I literally, if I can avoid it, don't have any podcast interviews in the morning. I don't have anything. Everything goes in the afternoon. So so that major overview is already planned out. Right. And then Sundays are really my planning days for the upcoming week. I see, wow. okay, what I what did I actually accomplish last week? Okay. And what did I, like, what are those little things that just did not get done that I have to toggle over to this coming week, right? Sure. So I'm just like going through, moving them over. And number one thing is really learning to prioritize what needs to get done, right? And not getting distracted by like, oh, but I feel like doing this right now. You know, that's how I used to just kind of get lost all the time. There are no more feelings. It's really discipline <laughs> of, hey, this needs to get done. Yeah. And then making space for any other things that just like make me happy. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, the thing the, the thing that's cool about life and, and I'm realizing this, um, I guess maybe it wasn't that I'm it's not that I'm realizing maybe more just accepting it and, and then mm -hmm. and then embracing it even is that it's never it's very rarely anyway, either or, right? In that, yeah, we do have to kind of nix the feelings for the sake of practicality and structure in order to have a life as a photographer. Like if we aren't, oh, and I know yeah. we're gonna talk more about this, but if we aren't intentional, for example, in this conversation, in planning out our week, or for that matter, even our year, if we wanna go to that level, it's just super impressive. If we're not yeah. intentional in that and set aside the, the, even the idea that I feel like or don't feel like doing this thing, if I realize on the other side of this choice is a significant benefit, which in this case is more freedom, more flexibility in my life, yeah, and we're intentional in that, then then we miss out, right? Then we then we function in this very reactive state, like a lot of photographers do, and we're overwhelmed, and that's just mm -hmm. where a lot of people, if if they set aside their feelings for a second, they make the practical yeah. choice, do the thing necessary to minimize that overwhelm. The cool thing is then we have on the other side of that, the space for all the feelings that we want. Like we can feel this thing and we can feel that thing as much as we want to. We can be the feelers, the emotional artist types, which by the way, I'm very much one. I'm learning to cope like that for mm -hmm. this idea of my emotions and then the practical nature of choice to coexist in my life. And the more and more that I embrace both of those things simultaneously, the more successful that I am certainly, but also kind of the, the more peace that I have overall as well. It, it's, it's cool that both of those things can coexist. And I just want to emphasize that because I think it's important. Everybody hears it. It's not that you have to be the, you know, all structured, nerdy yeah. workflow type. You can also be the artist type and both of those things can coexist practically. And I say nerdy yeah, I lovingly because I'm one of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I totally have to agree with you because for me, the moment it actually clicked, 
because I was resistant for the longest, you know, I am this free spirit, I am a bit creative, you know, or yeah. for those people who love the Enneagram, I'm an Enneagram 7, spontaneous, okay. what, I'm not going to get tied down to structure, me, no way, you know, <laughs> until I realize the fact that when I'm actually putting structure in, that's when I'm actually getting my freedom. That's it. That's it. And I think, mm -hmm. it, I mean, you summed that up so beautifully in about two seconds. It took me <laughs> two minutes to say. No, no, you said but it well. <laughs> that's, that is brilliantly put. And if it, like we could literally end the podcast right now, if photographers would embrace that very concept and actually apply it to their life, it would literally transform their life and business. And we're going to talk practically yes. about what that means here in just a second. Uh, and, and as we're, as we're talking here, Jacqueline from Facebook says, great talk. She says, I hope to catch the replay. Jacqueline, thanks for listening in even for a little bit and uh, definitely you. come back and uh, listen into the conversation. For those of you that are streaming live right now, of course, this will go out to audio within the next couple of weeks as well. So you can check that out on your favorite podcast player. I had just a couple more questions here before we go into the main topic at hand, mm -hmm. uh, which I know we've already been spending some time on, but talk yeah, to me sure. a little bit about the idea of delegation. I, I know you do your own editing, mm -hmm. but are there other elements of your business that you have experimented with delegation in, and have you found any kind of success in that? Yeah, definitely. Um, what I usually want to remind photographers is there are a lot of photographers who work alone in their business. And I'm fortunate enough to work with my husband, you know. So for some people, they think that's tricky. But for me, it's excellent. It works out cool. really well. And in the beginning, we really need to, we need to find our footing, you know. And um, one thing I realized in the beginning stages is like I'm really not one for like writing emails with clients especially because those emails are in German so it used to take me forever mm. German is not my mother tongue sure. and I would just spend ages going through it and wasting time until we realized okay this is not working for anyone because he always had to look over what I wrote you sure. know so any kind of written communication stuff he's doing or even the website when it's like text changing he's doing those kind of things we delegate it and then other things i take over and obviously like stuff like accounting and our taxes and stuff we're very lucky it's like a family business my husband's oh. father does all that stuff for cool. us which nice. is really great yeah yeah so um we just needed to find out hey who is better at doing what and um went from there so it's really good and there, I'm glad that you describe it this way too, because there are different ways to delegate, right? I, I think when we talk about the idea of delegation and outsourcing, everybody automatically goes to editing. And, and it is mm -hmm. one of the most time consuming elements of running a photography business in many, if not most cases. However, yeah. there are so many different ways, so many different elements of a photography business to delegate. And mm -hmm. there are also so many different ways to delegate those various elements of the business, whether that's working with a partner or it's yeah. delegating to an in-house assistant or an intern or looking for a yeah. third-party company that you can delegate the work to. There's so many different ways to do it. But one of the things that you highlighted was focusing on the things that you're good at. Um, and I think yeah. that's super important because that just kind of flows more naturally. I think the other mm -hmm. thing too that I just want to highlight as kind of a general concept about delegation and outsourcing is looking at delegating the things that are keeping us from focusing on what is actually enabling us to grow our business, right? Because yeah. there are certain tasks that we might be good at or that, we're, that we like doing, but they don't add to the bottom line. They don't enable us to reach our goals. So the question is, is the thing that I'm doing helping me accomplish those goals? Or could that be given to somebody else in order for me to focus on the things that do help me get to my goals and that do actually require my involvement? I think those are some good questions to ask as well. Yeah, totally. Um, just going back to it, I also want to mention having an intern is huge. We used to do that quite a bit uh, before COVID. That's why I didn't mention it now because that feels like a thing of the past at the moment uh, where we had an intern in-house. We'll see how that works out. But <laughs> I'm like, crossing my fingers for anybody who didn't. Uh, for those of you who are not live streaming with us, I was crossing my fingers as Ida was saying that. Yeah. Please continue. Yeah, you know, um, like things like album design, you know, stuff like that. So there are a lot of uh, aspects of your business that you can think about delegating, even if it's in-house or um, outsourcing. And um, what were you talking about? I kind of lost my uh, train of thought oh, there. No worries. I, I think we hit the topic pretty well. I just, you know, when we talk about time management. Delegation is a really important element of time management. Yeah. And so it, it's one that we need to hit. And again, very relevant to the conversation today. One last question for you before we, to, before we get to the topic at hand. Yes. Uh, and that is about a favorite book. Do you have a favorite business book or a self-help book that you would like to recommend to our listeners that's made a big impact on your life? Totally. Look, I have many books and 
some of the ones I wanted to mention initially I realized have been mentioned so many times on podcasts you know sure. that's Don Miller's story brand you mm-hmm. know or Atomic Habits by James Clear those have helped me tremendously mm. but there's a book that I feel is super underrated and thought this is a good time to mention it and it's The Thank You Economy by Gary Vaynerchuk I think that it has such good golden nuggets in it in terms of in this economy we really need to be client focused or customer focused and make sure that we're giving them that that in, intentional experience that is unique to who they are yeah and you talk about somebody who's got so much valuable content gary is definitely that i've, I've followed him for years um i just finished mm-hmm. his most recent book uh, when was it this feels like just a few weeks ago and yeah. um, I, I haven't, you know, I have not actually read the thank you economy yet. So I may have to add that to my list, but I popped it up on screen as you were talking here. The thank you economy, of course, it is by Gary Vaynerchuk. We'll make sure to link to this in the show notes at bocapodcast.com. And I, I do appreciate that share. I don't know that that's one that's been brought up yet. So you did a good job. Yeah, coming and up with I, something I know that it's underrated <laughs> and um, I've seen him mention the same thing. He's just like, why don't people talk about it? And I was thinking, mm. yeah, why don't they? I have it right here to show you. Um, it's, oh, wrong way around. <laughs> and it's actually really good and useful for the time that we find ourselves in right now as business owners. Cool. Well, I appreciate that share and very practical one at that. Of course, we'll link to that in the show notes at bocapodcast.com for anybody who's curious. We do push out those show notes. I know I'd mention it just kind of in passing here on the show, but everybody listening in, watching, we do post show notes. When the audio version of the episode goes out, we'll link to all the resources discussed in the podcast episode. So make sure you take advantage of those uh, if you're not already doing that. Okay. Ida, we're going to get to the topic at hand. I know we've kind of touched on it in various points in the conversation already. We're going to talk about workflow tips for minimizing overwhelm. And you actually alluded to this before we started the live broadcast today, but you said you, you've kind of, you alluded to the fact that you've learned from personal experience as it relates to this topic. And I'd love for you to give a little bit of background. What, what did overwhelm look like for you as a business owner and, and maybe kind of talk to us a little bit of the process of the realization of what was going on and beginning to make change. Yeah, so um, in the beginning days of our wedding photography business and videography, we were not charging a lot of money. Like we were working, we were taking on so many weddings, not earning a lot. And these weddings were like full day long weddings. Our packages were crazy in terms of we were promising a lot of images our uh, the length of the videos were long like we didn't know exactly what we we're doing right um the education back in the days was not as readily as available as it is today and we just were just in the mix of things like i said earlier just working weekend to weekend during the week we're just editing uh we're literally just in over our heads and ended up not being happy. That's yeah. kind of where we found ourselves until we realized, hey, if we don't make intentional changes, we're just going to be living this life uh, yep. season to season, right? Yep. So that's kind of where it started. Yeah, yeah. you know, I, I, maybe this is a weird analogy, but I, I was thinking about mm-hmm. this even earlier too. I feel like that the life of a photographer who is not being intentional, it's almost like being on a roller coaster like you know how you know when like especially if you're nervous about to get on a roller coaster and you sit down on a roller coaster and you pull that that latch down over you and and then it yeah. locks in the person walks by make sure it's locked in place and you're like oh shoot i'm in this thing now and i'm not going yeah. anywhere and then suddenly that that roller coaster you know yanks out from the start line mm-hmm. and you're just along for the ride there is no controlling it no changing it you're just stuck and you're going to get whipped through the turns and the loops and the craziness of this roller coaster. And, and to me, that is a pretty accurate picture of the way that a lot of photographers function. Like they're excited about starting a photography business. And once they get going and the momentum starts to build, then they're just on this crazy roller coaster. They're stuck on that roller coaster and they're just they're like hanging on for dear life along for the ride. And that defeats the whole purpose of getting into entrepreneurship in the first place, where we wanted to be our own boss. We wanted to have a a schedule we could control. We wanted to have more freedom, more flexibility. And yet we've created this monster that totally defeats that purpose. 
Yeah, and I mean, lucky for us, when all that was happening, we didn't have kids, you know? And at this point, we have two kids. So before that happened, we just knew, hey, um, you're forced to make things work and make the necessary adjustments, you know? So that's, true. that's when we just got our, our everything together. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. And we're going to talk about the practical in just a second. Do me a favor, mm -hmm. Ida, and like put your hand up close to the camera because I think we... It, oh, it, am I off focus? It's off focus, again? yeah. We'll see if we can get you back in. Oh, I just okay. had to do it a second ago for myself too. Every once yeah. in a while, it like just kind of goes, there we go. I, yeah, I think it's we're both back It's getting darker here too. The weather is changing, got darker. That's why like I, ha I was like even making it brighter on my camera. <laughs> no, no worries at all. No worries at all. Okay, so let me jump to the next question and we're, we're good to go now. Um, talk to me mm -hmm. a little bit. I mean, I understand your background and where you were at. You realized you need to make yeah. a change. You did make the change. Um, I don't know if you feel like the root cause of overwhelm is kind of the same, like at a, on a principal level, basic level for everyone. But what would you say, generally speaking, is that root cause? Like if a photographer feels overwhelmed, if we were to go like way, way, way deep, all the way to the bottom root level, what is that root level cause of overwhelm do you think in photographers' lives? Yes, it's like I mentioned earlier, and you already alluded to it, you said the word, it's just being unintentional. I think that like, when I look at different aspects of what can cause overwhelm, I feel like there's a lack of intention behind it. So going towards all these aspects that I'm going to cover very soon is about being intentional and going head on. Perfect. Well, let's actually just jump right into it. I know you told me before we got started, you've got kind of three big ideas to share about how photographers can be more intentional and minimize yeah. the overwhelm. I've got my pen and paper here, old school style. <laughs> I'm going to start taking notes. Let's jump into it. the first one, if you don't mind. Yeah. So the first one is about preparing in advance. So obviously when you're preparing in advance, you have to be intentional about it. And the way that I'm going to go about it is like I have sub points and I'm going to look at it from just the year. So let's say in the beginning of the year, it's about even setting goals, setting goals for your business specifically. And also just knowing, for example, OK, what are the financial goals? that you want to set how much do you want to earn from your photography business and how many weddings do you need to take on to make it happen right so th that's all a personal thing for you but okay. that way once you've set that in place yeah. you can actually you there's no need for you to even like overwork and take too many weddings like we had i don't know i remember my husband doing like 50 weddings a year at one point wow. you know like that was mad. Yeah, that does not need to be the case, you know, and just setting these goals. And like, I'm a person who just really says, OK, you need an overview and you need an action plan once you know it. And then you can really have those kind of milestones and really the steps you need to take to make it happen. So you're really preparing in advance. You're being intentional and not just like finding yourself in the midst of it and unaware of how you're going to go about it. And the way that you work, we did talk about it, like what's enough for you? Like, do you need a project management system for making it happen? Even when it comes to your clients, uh, are you a person who works well, like with a CRM system or just having a planner? You need to figure out what works well for you at this point. Like, I just feel like when you plan ahead, it's perfect. And then also knowing, OK, are there some productivity hacks that I can use? You know what I mean? Like some people, they just don't know. OK, like I was talking about what how do you work well? What time of the day do you work well? And the key game changer one for me has been learning batch working like that just really helped me out. Like what kind of tasks can you do a one go, right? Mm -hmm. How can you batch work mm -hmm. and figuring out, OK, just setting time aside to do those things is key and another thing we should not forget like i mentioned how my husband and i plan in trips or just planning in breaks because we are humans we need to realize that we're just not workhorses we're always on the go yeah. and that just kind of gives us time right to rest to rejuvenate yeah. and keep that motivation up yeah you know i, I was i was just talking um to Jill, who, who's our head of digital marketing, also happens to be my girlfriend. But we were talking just last night about this idea of having something to look forward to. 
she and I both work very, very well in that state, whether it's something small, like a weekend trip or something like that, or a big mm-hmm. trip, you know, we're going to go overseas somewhere. Having something to look forward to gives you a certain level of drive. And yeah. if we all we're ever doing, I mean, I like I have all the respect in the world for those who have a strong work ethic. And for, for that matter, actually, Jill, like is one of the most has one of the most incredible work ethics that I've ever seen. She's head down, just get stuff done, super practical in that way. And, it, and it's really pushed me as well, especially working with her now. But on the flip side of that is that sense of drive that we get, whether it's Jill, myself or anybody else that we get from having something to look forward to that we're working for. And of course, that can come in different forms, but certainly doing something like going on a trip enables us to experience the freedom, the flexibility that we've worked for as business owners. And it also gives us something to look forward to that isn't just about work because you're right. We're not just workhorses. Like there is way, way, way more to life than sitting in front of a computer and getting work done. And sure, we have to do it to Mm -hmm. make a living, but there's way more out there. And if we are intentional about it, as you're describing, then we can create the space that enables us to have the adventures in life that we that we can, that we can actually take advantage of this, this life as an entrepreneur. So I think this is good. I'm taking notes. You said that the first point is to prepare in advance. And, and I like that you started with the, the beginning of the year. I know people like New Year's resolutions, it, it's such a cliche thing now. And yeah. I, I think what gets missed, especially as business owners, is the opportunity to plan intentionally, as you're describing, Ida, for the sake of minimizing overwhelm, literally from the very beginning. Like most photographers are in the mindset of, I just need to book as many sessions or weddings as I possibly can, not really thinking about what, how that translates to the amount of money that they're, they're pulling in and how that money Mm -hmm. relates to their financial goals and needs. And so there's just a lack of intention in it. And I love that you're starting with, okay, this is how much I need or want. This, these, yeah. this is how many weddings I need to book in order to, to meet those those goals. And now I'm going to start to plan that out through the year. That kind of intentionality, it's it's not even like it takes that much time or is that difficult to do. You just have to do it. And I think that's a really great recommendation. Yeah, totally. And like when I talk about like blocking out time where you're saying, OK, this is when I'm having a break that involves also setting boundaries and saying no. Right. So an inquiry mm-hmm. for a wedding can come in and you actually have to say no, you know? Like, of course, there are times that, like, it might be really tempting. You might be like, okay, this is such a big booking. I will sacrifice. It could happen. Like, this is not black and white for me. But for the most part for us, like, we really set these kind of limits and we say, hey, we're unavailable. And um, it's at this point, like, also, you need to know, okay, is the economy fine? Do you have the luxury in your business to actually say no to sure. work yeah right every you need to know year to year like because we just had even the pandemic there were mm-hmm. times where we we're like okay we took on more bookings than normal just to be on the safe side but for the most part let's say it's a normal year and you're getting the increase they're flooding in and it's really just setting those boundaries and saying hey this is how i want to live my life and also i just want to mention like there's this whole thing about like mini sessions and stuff i've talked to photographers where they feel like oh um i see other photographers offering mini sessions for example in november after the season and i feel like i need to do it and then i just realized once it comes around i feel so overwhelmed why did i take this on and i'm like you you don't need to stay on your own path and stop looking around what other people are doing well you know we we talk quite a bit here on the podcast about the idea of a big picture view and mm-hmm. it, it's a it's a phrase that I got from a book called Time Management from the Inside Out, Julie Morgenstern. And she mm-hmm. talks about the how successful people in life have a big picture view. And the way that I've ultimately defined that for myself and as I've taught photographers time management and coming up with a big picture view, intentional set of goals um, that drives what it is that they do day to day. To me, a big picture view is made up of two things. It's it's financial goals needs obviously but Mm -hmm. goals ultimately wants desires as well so financial goals and then time goals so i know i need Mm -hmm. to make x amount of year to meet my financial needs and then also to meet my financial goals but i also know that i'm only willing to spend x amount of time on average a week or in a month in order to meet those financial goals so if i lead with that And it sounds very similar to what you're describing. If I lead with that at the beginning of the year, I know this is what I need to make this year, which means I need to book this many sessions or this many weddings. And I can do that if I, if I do it, you know, two a month or three a month or, you know, 
three sessions a week or whatever the thing is, but I know that I can meet these financial goals. If I lead with that intention, then it also gives me the opportunity to create the space for myself, which is, is huge. So I think this is a really, really good, very practical recommendation for, for our listeners. And I appreciate you going there. The other thing that you mentioned under this idea of preparation is task and project management system. Now, again, that sounds super nerdy probably to some people listening in, <laughs> but the reality is we all have stuff to do. And if we don't yeah. have a place to put that stuff to do, the list of things to do, we're going to forget it. Um, we're, we're not going to be as intentional in our work because now we don't have front and center what it is that actually needs to get done based on that planning that we did at the beginning of the year. So it's important to have somewhere to put, put, put this thing. I've spent, I'd, I've spent years, I'm, I, I am a total nerd. I've spent years yeah, literally see. looking through all the various project and task management systems and I've experimented with different options. Right now I'm keeping it super, super simple and I'm just using the task management system on my Apple phone. In the past okay. I've used um, a variety of software. There's so many different options out there. But I'm curious, is there a particular piece of software that you use or that you recommend to, li to listeners to, to keep track of that daily or weekly list of tasks? Yeah, you know, I've tried different ones out myself, you know, way back in the day, people were talking about Trello and I was like, oh, Trello is just not enough for me. Uh, tried out all of different ones. I've landed on Asana right okay. now. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Asana just is gives you the best of all worlds. You have the option to have like kind of a Trello board where you can move things around or you have a calendar overview or you have a list of things that you can check off your to do's. And for me, it's really important because it's not just about my photography business, but because I also do the podcast. And then I also have like personal projects going at the same time. I just need to track everything. Yeah. And then what I really do at the end of the day is really on top. I have my my priorities list. And those are the ones that I look at all the time. And once I've got those done is when I can like move on to the other things, but yep. I'm just always moving and updating it. So you just mm -hmm. also need to know that these things are flexible. You need to adjust to whatever is happening in life. And a key thing is whatever deadlines or everything you have, plan in buffer time because you never know what can happen in life. Like things can just throw you off track and you don't want things to get completely out of whack. So whatever you do, just really plan in some buffer into it. Yeah, th that's actually a really great suggestion, recommendation. And I, as I was, you mm -hmm. were talking about moving, having like ongoing multiple lists, right? Personal work yeah. stuff, the podcast, the photography business. I, mm -hmm. I, I function very similarly, actually. I have multiple lists. Again, I'm just using Apple's, I don't even know what they call it. That's, that's terrible. I mean, is it, it I, I think know. it's just called a reminders app. So you can oh, use yeah. it as a remind on, on, on an iPhone. You can, you can ask Siri to remind you to do something and it'll go into the reminders list. But I also have yeah. different lists. Like if I, if I go in and look right now, I have a, a work list. Um, I am, mm -hmm. I'm involved in multiple brands and I used to have lists for each of the like different brands and that became too much. I was like, too, I'm micromanaging my life and I'm not doing a good job keeping up. So I just kept it simple work, personal. Uh, I have a shopping list, which I share with mm -hmm. my kids so they can also add to the shopping list. Uh, conversation okay. as in communication conversations that need to be had and then research because I have a kind of a bad tendency of in the moment I'm like oh that seems really interesting and I want to go look the thing up when really I need to be focusing at the task at hand so I have a research list that I can put um, I can add items to and but the way that reminder the reminders app works on my iPhone is that there's also a today list so the cool thing is mm -hmm. I can at the beginning of the day or the end of the previous day I can go to the work list for example and I can move two or three of the most important items as you're talking about the prioritized items into that today list, or I can schedule it for tomorrow. So it pops up on the today list the next day. And I know that those are the most important tasks that I need to focus on. And this is something that does take intention. I want to be more consistent with that approach, but instead of looking at this massive list of things to do, if you focus in on two or three of the most important for that particular day, also giving your type, yourself the time and space as you were talking about to manage the other things that might come up, I think that's a really balanced way to go about it. If you do that consistently day in and day out, it's amazing how even the small steps get you further and get you closer to your goals. Yeah. And like when you said, if the list is also too big and too massive, that's just going to overwhelm us 100%. on like a mental level. Yep. You know what I mean? So like another thing I really focus on is how can I simplify things? Do you know? It's like, let's not overcomplicate things at all. Like just <laughs> break yeah. things down, you yeah. know? And um, that is one of the ways to combat 
overall. It's so true. But that, and that's what I was talking about. Like I using this other, I mean, even Asana, I'm, I'm relatively familiar with Asana. Asana has so mm -hmm. many features and functions. And I think a lot of photographers would yeah. look at that and they'd be like, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> Um, and yeah. that's kind of where I went. Like I totally geeked out and tried all these different pieces of software. And at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? I just need to get the thing done. So the simple way to do that for me at the, at the moment um, has been to go to this. And I've done this within the last year or so because I've been kind of obsessed with the idea of using specifically task and project management systems to do it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are a, a number of them. Um, yes. And I've used those and they're great. But I just decided to go really, really simple. And you're right, absolutely right, that at the end of the day, if we focus on just a few simple things or a very simple workflow and we show up and do that consistently, it's amazing how far we'll get. Being fancy doesn't get work done, right? You gotta get no. actually get the work done. So <laughs> keeping it simple and focused is good. Okay, I, I know that yeah. we're, we're kind of parking here and, and there's so much to cover. Making sure that the other thing that I wrote down under preparing in advance is, is the importance of a schedule. You emphasize the importance of a schedule that works for you, that works best around your, your personality, your tendencies, mm -hmm. what your life looks like with kids or not kids and partner or not partner, whatever is going on. It's important to understand yeah. or to come up with a schedule that works and also to keep that flexible as well. I'll add, let's go ahead and go to the second big idea, if you don't mind. Um, I, I don't want to take too much of, of your time. Let's jump to no, that. No, you're perfect. But like we're getting into it perfectly because the second point is really about simplifying okay. and getting organized, <laughs> you know, uh, because uh, we have a tendency of just like being all over the place and you just want to cut it down to the minimum of what you want to do. So under this point, one thing I want to talk about is about creating workflows, templates and checklists. You know, and what happens to a lot of photographers is that initial work to create these type of workflows and realize, okay, what are all the steps that I need to do to get something done? Yeah. Putting that down, that's a lot of work. Creating templates, whether it be like email templates, anything like any kind of graphics that you need to get done, or even if it's like guides or anything, this takes work. But that's that initial work that's gonna pay off for years to come. 100%. Yeah, but it's easy to get stuck there. I've gotten stuck there for sure. Like it, it's yeah. funny how some of these things that we build up in our mind is, is <laughs> oh, it's going to take so much time. It's so annoying and I don't want to go do it. And we go do it. It didn't even take that long. We just made it yeah. way worse in our mind than it actually is. But it, it is it, the initial investment is, I mean, it certainly there's a little bit of time involved. I think even back to when I started um, kind of digitizing all my documents and going to a digital workflow. This is literally like, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, maybe more. Mm -hmm. But when I started moving everything into Evernote, do you use Evernote? I've never used it actually. <laughs> so Evernote is what I use to manage documents and notes mm -hmm. um, in, in, for my workflow. And I have literally for, I think I passed the 10 year mark not real long ago. I have over 17,000 documents in there, literally. Um, so I've been using it a lot, but it, it's kind of my, my digital brain and organizational yeah. system for documentation. Everything from taxes to meeting notes to uh, recording certain emails to text messages. I mean, like mm -hmm. everything just kind of goes into that one place. And it took the initial process of going from a literal metal filing yeah. cabinet with my, my con it's paper scary. contracts <laughs> and having to scan all those in and digitizing them. It took some time, right? And that's the last thing yeah. that most people would think to do because they're like, that's annoying. That's, that's for nerd stuff. But what that mm -hmm. translates to though and is going to that workflow has freed me up, has kept things. I mean, yeah. I, somebody can ask me a question about something and I can type a few letters or words in and I immediately have this stuff. I've been audited a number of times um, by the IRS and that whole yeah. process, that can be stressful, right? But when everything totally. is just in one simple folder in Evernote and I can hand that to accountant and say, there you go, take a look, so simplifies good. that whole process. So it's, it's amazing how we kind of limit ourselves with the apprehension of, oh, I got to put a little bit of time and work in when on the other side of that is so much benefit if we're just willing to make that investment. So I'm so glad that you highlight that. Yeah, and I want people to remember, like, it's not just freeing up your time, like your physical time, it's freeing up your mental space and also that energy. Like, you don't even have to think much. Like, when you have it, it's just flows so much better. And when you actually yeah. create these things, that added benefit is the client experience is even better because you're not missing anything. That human 100%. error is reduced. You're staying on brand. You're just getting things done on time. Uh, uh, the upside is so huge, but get that initial work in. That's that's so good. You know, we talked earlier about how feelings and structure aren't mutually exclusive. They can coexist. I think the idea of being 
certainly client focused, of uh, being the artist who likes to photograph, spend time doing personal projects or just focusing on photographing our clients, that mm -hmm. the art art and structure can also coexist as well. And and to your point earlier, and, and as we're talking about now, having the structure in place enables the space to do those other things that we just love so much. Yes. If, if we're yes. just willing to make that little bit of investment and time-wise on the other side that has so much freedom and flexibility mm -hmm. to do the things that we absolutely love, it enables that. And, and that's really, really key. So. We, we start by preparing in advance. We have that big picture view. We know what it is that we're trying to yes. achieve. And that kind of drives our behavior day to day, week to week, month to month. We then mm -hmm. go to simplifying the workflow down to the steps and getting that organized into a system, repeatable system. That is super important. Yeah. And, and to your earlier point, I think literally if photographers go in and list everything that they do day to day so that they have an accurate, like almost accountability of how they're spending their time and then figure mm -hmm. out ways to take out the unnecessary, to simplify the stuff that does exist there and to systematize what's left so that it can be done efficiently and repeated very quickly over and over again, it'll put them in a great yeah. place. Totally. And the next thing I want to talk about is like when it comes to delegation, of course, we already touched upon what you can delegate in your work, but we sometimes forget, uh, forget what can we delegate in our personal or private lives, right? Like one huge thing that I've done is like, I don't need to go to the grocery store anymore. Literally always order groceries and they're delivered to my door. And that has saved my mental space because I don't have to always think about, okay, I'm making a grocery list that's already saved in my favorites thing of this grocery app. And I'm not wasting time driving over there, going through like all the store, coming back. There are things in your life that you can do to like free up space, like even if it's somehow getting your laundry done or someone helping you with like cleaning up around the house or anything like that. So don't underestimate what you can also do within your private life. That's good. And would, would you put that as I'm, again, being the nerd here, taking notes, would you put that under the mm -hmm. simplify and get organized? Or are we going to the... Is yeah, that the, totally. Okay. Okay, cool. So mm -hmm. looking for opportunities to delegate, not just our business life, elements of our business life, but also our personal life. And you know what? You, you make such a good point. And we've had one or two guests that have talked about that, like the shopping through the app. I, I'm I'm a tech yeah. guy. I mean, we're getting ready mm -hmm. to start a tech company, a brand new, brand oh. new company. Um, and yet that's still something that I haven't gone to do yet. And you're right. It would save so much time if I would just order the groceries online and pick them up in person. I don't have to actually go through the store or I can have them delivered. Just delivered would, at your door. Yeah. Like literally that happened this morning for us. We, uh, he brought it like our delivery guys more or less the same one and he's so kind he knows what we like we cool. we put all the things into the fridge and then off he's on his way with his, with his bags <laughs> wow okay yeah see I, I need to i definitely need to experiment with that okay that's a good reminder I love it. so prepare in advance mm -hmm. simplify and get organized we talked about some practical ways to do that um take mm -hmm. us to that third point if you will Okay. Third, oh, before I get to that main third point, I still want to talk about automation. Oh, please. Because that's a huge part of it, right? Um, like CRM is like that umbrella of part of automation where you have all your client stuff, right? There are different um, tools you can use. Like there's Dubsado or HoneyBook with your contracts and sending out emails as you want. But there are also other things you can automate when it comes to like your bookkeeping stuff, or even if you're setting up appointments with your clients where you don't have to do emails back and forth, you can have something like Calendly who's handling that for you, putting it in your calendar, setting up the Zoom meeting. These, All these things just don't need your involvement. You can see, okay, where do I not need to be part of the equation and can be systematized, right? That's part of like automation, figuring out what you need. Mm. And also like, in your workflow in terms of like the pro after the session uh for example i use pick time right for delivering my galleries but it's also perfect for like selling prints for example right and you can automize like um emails that are going out to your clients right there's so many opportunities there that are overlooked sometimes it's so true. Yeah, and, and actually mm -hmm. to, to your earlier point, if, if photographers literally make a list of everything that they do in a day, you could literally Google, you could go and Google every single thing that they do, at personal or professional, in a day, and you could either find a service. In 2022, you can find a service, yeah. or you can find a piece of software likely that will help you with every single one of those items. Maybe you still have to shower on your own, but other than that, 
<laughs> you can't like you might not be able to automate that process yet. But but literally, I mean, almost everything that we do on a day to day basis, there's a service for a piece of software for. And, and you're talking about these various software solutions. The cool thing about the software, like Calendly, for example, the number of hours yeah. that I've saved over the years sending somebody a calendar link to book a phone call, to book a podcast interview or otherwise yeah. is mind boggling. And it costs me all of $10 a month or $15 a month. Exactly. So the cool thing is that these software solutions exist that help automate some of our workflow that costs little to nothing. There's, mm -hmm. there's absolutely no reason that everybody listening in should not be going and doing exactly that. Make a list of everything that you do and then go Google every one of those things and look for opportunities to be able to automate some of that workflow. They're, they're there and they're pretty ripe for the taking. They're like there's the, the little cost is still mind boggling to me. Like how many hours, if, if I do the math and I figure out how much I'm worth an hour and the amount of time, money, well time, but then money that I've saved over the years as a result of using Calendly just by itself, that's one piece of software is mind boggling. We just have to make the effort. We have to be intentional to your point. Yeah, totally. And that investment pays off really, really good. It's just like you mentioned earlier, I wanted to dive a little deeper into saying, hey, how much time are you spending working in your business instead of on your business? If you're constantly working in your business, you're going to stagnate. You're going to stay in the same place year in, year out. But once you kind of step back and have the opportunity to work on your business, you can go places. You can make those big picture changes and it's way more fun that way. <laughs> That's a good way to sum it up. Okay. We've got just a few <laughs> minutes left. Let's jump to yeah. that third big point. If you don't mind, tell me what that is. Totally. So the third big point goes to what we experienced when we were super overwhelmed was the fact that we were not charging enough and our pricing, our packages were not serving us well, right? So what I want to say is review your brand and your business. Ask yourself, hey, am I actually working with my right fit clients? Am I actually making the money that I want to make, need to make? right and see what changes you need to make so for us we really did a whole rebrand and really think about okay how can you update your website your the aesthetics of your website the copywriting your portfolio to attract that kind of right fit client for your business and how can you adjust your pricing and your packages in a way that it's just not overwhelming you like if you have things for example like oh you're just offering a free engagement shoot with every package and it's just actually not necessary but you end up having to go shoot an engagement session that nobody really asked for those type of things just refining reviewing and making those necessary changes is huge in reducing overwhelm that's great. Well, and what the way that I wrote that down as I'm taking notes here was um, to well make sure my business is serving my goals, right? That, that be I mean different totally. ways that we could sum that up, but really that's what we're talking about doing. Make sure that my business is serving my goals, the needs and desires that I have. And that takes us back. I mean, it's kind of cool actually because it takes us back to the very first point that you made, which is to prepare in advance. If we've actually taken the time to establish mm -hmm. what we were talking about, that big picture view, we know what it is that we're trying to accomplish this year. And maybe we have some bigger picture goals even that um, are out further two, three, four years into the future. Yes. We know what it is that we're trying to achieve. Then we can way more easily create not only a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month schedule that enables us to have mm -hmm. the life that we want to, but we can sure plan a business or design a business more effectively to serve those goals, those desires as well. But it starts with yeah. that intention. We have to be intentional about it. We have to be clear about it. Then we can be intentional about it and, and yeah. enable us to be able to business, to, to build a business that, that serves the goals that we have. And I think that's a beautiful way to sum up this conversation. And I know that like, this is a, it's such a loaded topic, Ida. Um, and we could I know I could talk like, forever. It's good that I had to quickly sum it up because I love it. <laughs> it actually is a whole lot of fun. <laughs> well, it's fun, but it's so practical. And that's what I, I you know, is. we've kind of joked about the nerdiness factor of this topic. Yeah. And I think a lot of times photographers kind of set it aside or ignore it or kind of laugh mm -hmm. it off under that guise. They're like, oh, that's not really relevant to me. I'm an artist or, you know, I did this thing. But the reality is we all have a business which is yeah. going to either enable us or not enable us to reach the goals that we have, intentional or not. And so rather than just kind of going along for the ride, 
let's actually create the ride that we want to. Let's be intentional about the goals that we have. Let's be then as a result, intentional about the schedule that we're creating for ourselves. And let's be intentional about creating a business that enables those goals. And our lives as a, as a photography business owner are going to be way more enjoyable as a result. So th this is this has been super practical, super helpful. I really, really appreciate it. And you know, something we talked about your photography business. I just have to bring this up really quick. Is um, I, I never popped it up on screen, but Ida A I D A and Tim dot com is your wedding photography, uh, your photography and film business. And for anybody who's live streaming with us, you can see that on screen. And at Ida and Tim on Instagram. And then back to your original podcast, wedding-photography-podcast.com. And then Ida, A-I-D-A-G-L-O-W-I-K, Ida Glovic on Instagram. We'll link to all of these in the show notes Perfect. at bocapodcast.com. This has been super fun, Ida, and I, and I really appreciate it. And again, because this is such a loaded conversation, we only have so much time today. I know I just brought up your podcast, but remind our listeners how they can find you and what they can learn via that podcast to kind of continue the conversation. Thank you so much, Nathan, for having me. It's been amazing. Yeah, I mean, the best way to actually listen uh, for me is like tune into my podcast it's called my wedding season the podcast which you can find on itunes and spotify and this is the stuff that i talk about and i get guests on and they give us our perspective on all things brilliant brilliant okay we'll we'll <laughs> link to that in the show notes as well at bocapodcast.com ida thank you again for your time today uh this has been a thank super you. fun conversation and um I, I hope everybody listening in has has taken something away that you can you'll go apply now that's the key you do have to actually go apply it the ideas are good totally. you got to go apply it but i hope you'll do that and uh, for anybody who is not following ida make sure that you do reach out to her if you've got any questions thanks again Absolutely. ida i really appreciate it